Hi everyone, this is Charlie. He's come to interrupt me as usual. <laughs> I hope you're well. I just thought to myself today, gee, I really miss going out to parties and weddings and celebrations and I really long for those times to be coming up in the future. And I thought there's a lot of dresses in my cupboard that I just can't wear at the moment, but I really want to get them out again soon. And in particular, the very easy Vogue dresses that I know you're going to love. These are my top makes for Big Four pattern. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. So I don't know about you guys, but in our current climate in Melbourne here in Australia, we're still in lockdown. We haven't had parties or weddings or that sort of thing since February, March. So we're really longing for those type of celebratory events to happen again soon because we love glamming up and getting dressed up. So I think a bit of inspiration might be great if you guys are allowed to do that wherever you are in the world. You are very lucky at the moment because you will get the chance to dress up. Now, the first one I have got on today, I've made about three or four of these so far. You probably know this really popular cult classic dress. I'm sure you've all heard of the V9253. Very, very popular cult classic pattern. Very low, plunging, deep V-line at the front. And you'll notice, of course, I have modified mine because most people I've seen wearing these Cannot wear them like that. Some people have gotten away with it and they look fantastic. But yeah, for everyday wear, I cannot get away with that. Um, and I think it looks lovely to sport up a little bit higher. And I have done an episode in this before that if you haven't seen it, I will link it above. And it's a special uh, episode I did with two of these with a linen version in a chartreuse green and this gorgeous rayon crane print, like a, sort of like a Japanese print. So I'll give you a bit more of a look, but if you haven't seen it, there is a pattern. Now, Carlos Correa from Vogue, I think there was an episode on Love to Sew. He was talking about the, the infamous dress that they bought out that was they just took off on social media. It was hugely popular. And they were very surprised at that because of the way how daring it was. They didn't think that it was going to take off the way it did. And they were very pleasantly surprised on the popularity of the dress. But when you construct it and you put it on, it feels like a million dollars. So I'll give you a look. So it has kimono shaped sleeves low front neckline that I have stitched up because it really comes almost to the waist so it's very daring um, but you can modify that really easily and I've shown everyone on that particular episode how to do it it's all just a matter of meeting up the seams and stitching it up the neckline's done with bias binding the construction couldn't be easier and the thing that I love about it is the fitting now this one has got an invisible zip in the back see but when it's undone the tie actually shows you that it's quite a bit of an ease around the waist and the tie is a double front tie so you can actually tie it around the back bring it out the front or vice versa so it really depends on how you want to wear it um, but I love the big deep pockets so if you're going to a wedding or a party and you want to pop something in your pocket you've got really generous sized pockets um, it does require a huge amount of fabric so this particular fabric was from spotlight it was a rayon on special I think it was under ten dollars a meter, so it used about four and a half meters. And that was of a one thirty-eight width, so quite a bit of fabric. But gee, it gives a dramatic, stunning effect. Um, I just love the way it's come up. So it's one of my favorite dresses. I've made this in, yeah, as I say, in the linen as well. It's a bit more casual, a bit more short. The sleeves are a tiny bit shorter as well, but it gives a total different look without that drape. So I love both the versions. I think the drapey fabric really lends itself nicely to that style but the linen gives it that nice crisp almost more casual look I made one of these for my daughter Charlotte I'll pop a picture up of that as well in a gorgeous silky um, satin fabric in like a rainbow we had a 1969 party for my hubby's 50th last year and she went all out with the whole retro looking uh, colors and it looked gorgeous on her too so because I bought the larger size pattern make sure you get your right size group um, mine was the size 18. I think I graded from a 16 around the top and an 18 around the waist. But that was because I made a 12 first, which is really important if you're using a beautiful fabric, make it in a cheaper fabric first because with most big four patterns, they do tend to you know, need a bit of grading, um, but it's very easy to do that. And the thing that I learned from Barbara Amodi, I think Barbara Amodi's book, I've linked that before and I'll link it below. She actually recommends you always go by your upper bust measurements, especially for around the shoulder, because if you end up going on just your waist uh, and bust measurements, 
you will end up usually with a garment with so much ease through the top and it really can destroy that the style of the garment so be very very careful with that but always look at the upper bust measurement if you know that the, the skirt's got ease through it with the hips and waist so really love the pattern but yeah i had to go back and buy the smaller size range from my daughter because she loved it too and that's one thing i find with a lot of big four patterns having that crossover in the middle with size ranges and you don't always meet and get the ones you want if you want to make other versions for different family members yeah you need to buy two but i think it's worth it for this pattern because i love it so i'll show you some more footage of me outside in the garden and you can have a bit more of a look at the dress So if you haven't made it, which a lot of you would have already, but really uh, definitely consider it. Go on the hashtag on Instagram and look at all the different versions. For me, it's all about the drape. Time for a quick change. Now, if you've been watching my channel from the start, you might remember back at Christmas time, I did a twice as nice series with a lot of dresses done in the same pattern, different fabrics. This was one of them and I love it. It's the Vogue 8896. It's in a knit fabric. This is a stretch velvet, which I love, especially for Christmas time. But here in Australia, it's really hot for Christmas to wear velvet. This is just a gorgeous dress and I think that you would definitely love it in a variety of knit fabrics. Now, I made the size 16 in this. It's got quite a bit of ease and it's a true wrap dress. Really easy to construct and really lovely to wear. Really any moderately stretchy fabric jersey interlock would be fine for this and you can really change the effect of it with the fabric that you use. So that's it up close. Definitely want to think about and you can do it in a sleeveless version or a sleeve version and I've extended the short sleeve version into a long sleeve which I'll show you next as well. But love this dress. It's just a classic, simple, easy dress. I'll give you a bit more of a look at it too. I will link that episode if you haven't seen it. it. It is my twice as nice Christmas special, but you can really get a feel for how you could do it in some gorgeous fabrics um, to really dress up for a lovely cocktail event. And also too, that you can use that pattern again to be dressed down. So first, here's some footage of me out in the garden that you might like to see in the daylight just to show you the actual style features of the dress. Back for a quick change. You may remember this fabric that I've shown before. This was from Lincraft, believe it or not. It was one of those purchases that I knew I could do something amazing with. The pattern again, same pattern, 8896, very easy Vogue. Now the thing that I changed about this is I extended the sleeve, of course, very easy to do when you've got the short sleeve already to extend. But I decided to use a ponty on the sleeve. Now it's an ITY jersey, which if anyone's sewn with it, they know it can be a bit troublesome to sew with. It can end up um, on cuffs, like stretching out. So I wanted to put a nice ponty finish on the end and on the ribbing. So I made like a bias binding. I think it gives that nice stability because with an ITY, of course, crossing over for a wrap dress, it can end up stretching, getting a bit baggy. So if you want to give it a bit of stability, a ponty trim is awesome to use. And I also extended the ponty to use for the tie, so coordinating tie as well and I think it really just pops out I love that pink and red combination it's not something I wear very often but when I see it on other people it looks amazing so I always think pink and red yeah just things like that I think like things like blue and green things that we've been told not to wear together I think that they're on those sort of color scales that they just pop together it really is worth considering so there's no pockets in this dress it's just a nice streamlined kind of a wrap dress but very classic very easy to make and gives a great statement if you're wearing especially a patterned fabric it's a nice plain uh, pattern that you can really make the fabric stand out so i'll give you a look at this one very happy with this dress definitely be a keeper in my pattern stash 
size 16 are made of it because it's stretchy you don't have those fitting issues that you would so it's great to be able to make a cocktail event dress that you can whip up quite quickly so love this dress definitely uh, be wearing this more for years to come next change back again this is one of those dresses that i had seen on instagram and it was from ginger thread girl jen had had this on for a, a lovely day i think a wedding she went to and she made it in a lilac floral print it just looks stunning on her she did the full length version with the split and you can see there's two versions there so you can either go for that ruffle trim or the long uh, with the split you can mix you can mix and interchange the sleeves if you'd prefer to have a short sleeve or a sleeveless that's quite easy to fix as well and this one it does say that you can use things like crepe linen blends rayon blends and border prints so when i saw this fabric in spotlight it's a satin twill and i'd never really sewn with it before but i knew from this border print i could really make this dress work it's got pockets it has a lovely uh, tie that you can bring around the front next time i think i'd make the tie a little bit longer because you'll see that it wraps around the back it's actually not meant to be tied like that but i prefer to give me a bit of waist definition but if you had a drapier fabric, you probably wouldn't need it to be cinched in quite that much. It will just fall a bit nicer. This fabric has not got a lot of drape. So it probably isn't the best fabric to show off the actual style of the dress. But I think the border print made it worth it. So did a bit of pattern matching. I think it came up really nice. Now another great thing about this dress, there is no zips, no buttons and no fastenings. So I was quite surprised because it looked like quite a fitted dress on the pattern envelope. But when I saw it was just a pullover dress, I thought great because I love the fact if you can pull in a waist ties and cinch it in, give yourself that waist definition without having to put any closures in. So it makes it really simple So, But I would love to see that full length version that, that Jen made. I think it's stunning. With the slit at the front, you can really make it as high or as low as you wish. But um, yeah, a really easy dress pockets, which is fantastic as well, because who doesn't need pockets in an evening gown, especially if you're carrying things like lipstick, phones and wallets. Um, I think a great pocket can really work wonders. But I love the uh, bit of a flamenco vibe it gives this dress. I just think it's really, uh, the fabric's really brought it out. And for the next one. Now this one particularly you may remember, I wore this to my twin daughter's 21st birthday at the start of the year. We had a fantasy dress up night and I was mother nature and I love this dress. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, I don't know if I really will get the wear out of this because it looks very ball-like, glamorous. No, that's not something I'll get the wear out of. Um, and also the fabrics that can be made in as well. It is uh, V9292, very easy though. Again, there's two versions. Now the plunging front neckline, of course, I've modified that again because I wasn't going to bother putting the organza um, little strip of fabric in there. I just decided to make the neckline come up a bit higher instead. Now this one is unusual because it can be made in things like poplin, linen, jacquard, and organza and chiffon, things like taffeta, things with a bit more body and a bit more structure. And the way that it works is because of all the princess seams you've got through the front and it's got a lot of stitching down the front panels, it can make a really striking looking dress and the fit is amazing with those princess seams as well. So I'm really happy with the lovely loaded v-neck. I think it always looks striking, a nice v-neck. Little cap sleeve, which has got facings on as well. And you've got the invisible zip in the back as well. But I just love the, the fit and flare look. I think it really can look quite stunning on a lot of people. So that's the V9292. I shall give you a bit more of a look at that one. It was another really easy make. Now I had this fabric sitting in my stash for probably four or five years. Uh, it is a faux silk suiting. It's one of those fabrics I didn't know what to do with, but I knew I had to have it because it had all my colors. Now the other version in this fabric, I had made a Suki robe at the start. Well, actually it was Christmas time last year and it came up beautiful for a Suki robe as well. But I think this uh, fabric has done the dress wonders because it really has got that right amount of structure. So you don't want anything too drapey for this particular style. This is something with a little bit more body. I think, um, yeah, you can really make it look quite beautiful. It's one of those dresses that when you twirl around, it'll spin around. Uh, it's not a full circle skirt, but it has got that lovely fit and flare and kind of 
billowy drape to it. So definitely want to think about, yeah, did the size uh, 16 with 18 grading as well. So really think about making a 12 first uh, because it's quite a bit more fitted and it doesn't have ties. So you really have to think about getting that fit perfect around the bust line as well. Some other very easy Vogue patterns that I know uh, have worked for a lot of people. I've seen them on social media and thought, I've got to make these. It's hanging around the stash. And uh, yeah, the things that I can see working very well for the wardrobe. I love a pattern that you can make for wearing as casual wear or that you can really dress up with the type of fabric you use. So this one in particular, I haven't made it, but I've seen it done on a lot of people. It's the V9251. It's another wrap dress. And I think that looks stunning. It's a nice drapey fabric. So something like a rayon viscose would work perfectly. It either has a short sleeve or a flutter sleeve, which I love. And you can do the midi or maxi length as well. So a really pretty style. One to definitely think about uh, having in the wardrobe because that kind of classic wrap style really never goes out of fashion. You'll see it come in every year and it's always just adapted a little bit. But yeah, love the fact that you can do that with a nice drapey fabric. That one can actually also be made with a lightweight jersey as well. So when you get one of those patterns that can be done in knits and wavens, I think is fantastic to grab. Now Spotlight in Australia this week have had a very easy Vogue sale. They had $6 patterns. So I've got a lot more coming. I've got online and um, ordered a few more. So they'll be hopefully here next week um, because I know that they really work for me, these patterns. Um, so they'll be here very shortly. But the other two I've got here that I have seen um, on this one on Una Baluna. If you haven't followed her, definitely think about looking at her Instagram. It's the V9053. It's a beautiful goddess-like, um, almost like a Greek goddess gown with the, the rouging across the, sort of down the, over the shoulders and that lovely, beautiful drapey skirt that you cinch in at the waist. That would look gorgeous in things like chiffons and flowy fabrics as well, things like crepe de chine, georgette, um, chamoose, and it also says a matte jersey as well. So that's one I really would love to wear. I just need the occasion to wear it. And this one has been in my stash for about two years that I just had to grab it because I love the different sleeve variations. It's V9328. It's got a gorgeous keyhole back as well. Um, so I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but I'll show you the different variations on the back as well that you can do that lovely keyhole back. But I think all those sleeve variations are really quite gorgeous and very versatile. So if you wanted to make the, the long uh, bishop sleeve, it would work really well. Or you've got the bell sleeve, you've got the flutter, so you can change the length of the skirt. So a lot of different variations in that. So, so a really worthwhile pattern to have in the stash. Um, but definitely, I love the maxis. I love the long line floaty type dresses that cinch in at the waist and I love a v-neck as well as you can probably tell. So I hope you've enjoyed that today and I really hope you've got somewhere to wear one of these dresses too because there's nothing better than getting glammed up and frocked up if you've been in uh, isolation for quite a while and you're really longing for those special events to go to. It's nice to have something there ready, a pattern maybe ready or some fabric that you may have in mind ready to go. You just have to wait for the event or make your own event even. But I just think uh, yeah, when you have those things taken away, it really makes you realize how special it is to get the hair and makeup done and really feel like a million dollars. So the best thing about sewing is we can create that look ourselves. Um, it just really takes a bit of um, creativity and a bit of thought to go into that whole creative process. So love frocking up and I hope you've enjoyed these cocktail dresses. So thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel and you want to create your own wardrobe, this is a perfect time to do so. Hit that notification bell if you want to be alerted to new episodes coming up and I shall see you next time for a new episode. Bye for now.